Hello, hello. My name is Annie, and today I've got my very late cash stuffing for the month of May. Now, again, I'm very behind on all of my videos. I have been working quite a lot. Um, yeah, and I just haven't had the time to get out the camera and film. I have no idea how much I have to stuff. <laughs> Oops, for the month of May. So let's uh, count it up. You know, I don't always get things out all at once. So sometimes I get all my, you know, money out, my trackers filled in and then, you know, come to it filming two, three weeks later. So I have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 3,500, 4,000, 4,500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 5,000 dollars. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 850, 900, 5,900, 50, 70, 80. So $5,980. So let me get that put out on a tray. So if you're new here, I use play money. So, you know, just children's toy money uh, to represent the money I have in my bank account. Uh, so I am a digital cash stuffer. I do this to represent, obviously, all of the buckets I have in my offset account, which is a basically a savings account account linked to a mortgage and for every dollar I keep in that offset account I pay well zero taxes on it on the interest uh, and I also reduce the interest I owe on my home loan so it's a great nifty product for homeowners in Australia so again all of our tax systems do favor homeowners Speaking of being a property owner, the reason why I have been so late with these videos is because I am working a lot more um, because of the 13 interest rate hikes to my variable home loan. I basically need to come up with an extra $15,000 extra per year minimum and that's not including the extra things like, as we all know, that the cost of living is much, much higher now. And, you know, it's just me on the mortgage. So, <laughs> yay. I won't lie. I've been struggling a little, but uh, I'll talk more about that later. In taxes, I have to put $2,000 in. So this is going to be due soon, the quarters. So 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 9,100, 200, 300, 9,000, 300 dollars. Taxation. I'm skipping super salary sacrifice this month. Um, bills and utilities is getting its regular 500 dollars. Now, when I'm filming this, the budget has just come out. The national budget has just come out. And the interesting tidbit, I think, that the government will lean into is that they're going to give everyone, every household, not everyone, I know they're saying everyone, but the fine print, right? Read the fine print. Every household... $300 to add to their electricity bill. Now, that's not going to be in the form of cash. The more I read about it, it seems to be given out in quarters. So that's $300 divided by four quarters, meaning $75 per quarter or $25 per month. And that's not going to go as money straight to you. I believe that's going to be a credit given to all of the energy electricity companies. So, yeah. I have words about that, but yeah. It's more political, I think, than actually financially a move there. So I think it's going to lower inflation numbers, but, you know, you can't tell me that you guys aren't going to put that 
25 bucks per month and spend it, all right? If, if you think that you're going to save that $25 per month, then you won't be adding to inflation. If you're going to be spending that $25 per month, yeah, it's inflationary. So whatever. Bills and utilities now has 1,000, 1,500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,900, 50, 70, 90. I just paid for home, uh, for contents insurance, so that'll be coming out. Council rates will be getting $100. So I have 100, 200, 300, 20, 40, 340 bucks. Strata levy. This one's going up. Insurance is going through the roof. It's getting 300 bucks. So I've got 500, 600, 700, 800, 20, 40, 840 bucks. Medical. Uh, I think I'm skipping this. Oops, just hit you. Sorry. Yeah, medical's getting skipped this month. Business is getting 100 bucks. So I've got $600. End of financial year is coming just around the corner. So last day of June. So July 1st is the new financial year. Savings is getting 500 bucks. And this is going to get emptied out in June. So... 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 9,500. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's gone, it's gone. It's, it's going back into the business. Um, yeah, <laughs> I know, I'm just kind of tired and having kind of, of a midlife crisis, probably. Some to some days I do genuinely feel like when I just get ahead, there's something that takes you two steps back. But you know, no time to dwell on that. So whatever. Emergency fund is unchanged at fifteen thousand dollars. Groceries and eating out is getting its regular six hundred bucks, and we're well into the month already. So you know, half of it is gone. Splurge is getting $200. Now, I did just spend some of this. Um, I think I bought some new clothes. Yeah, some long sleeve shirts and stuff like that. Yeah, some of it is getting ratty. And I don't know where this paint came from, but I have paint. So, <laughs> yeah. Clothes. So... 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 950, 960, 965 in splurge. Home is getting $100. Oh, and my envelope is falling apart. 100, 200, 20, 40, 60, 80, 280. Yeah, I'll need to run that through the laminator again. And I'm also needing some new fry pans, just the basic ones. So we'll see what's on sale. Family is getting 150 bucks. So now it has 100, $250. Gifts and hosting is going to get 50 bucks. So I've got 50, 70, 90, 95. And overspending isn't getting anything, but it still has 100 bucks in case I go over any of these categories. And the final thing I'm giving to is month ahead. Next month is getting $1,000. Um, I constantly dip into this envelope for some months where my income fluctuates, it's lower um, and, you know, during my off seasons. Obviously, I am working through my peak seasons. My off seasons are usually towards the end of the year, January, you know, 
December, January, when every office shuts down. Um, so just like to keep that as a buffer. So in next month, I have $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. And that's not even a mortgage payment, so fun. Um, and that's it for bills and sinking funds. On to savings challenges. Now, I did uh, reallocate my scrimp and save money. Um, I had just over a hundred bucks in this, so I will be restuffing it into my um, other challenges. Uh, this is money I take from my just general grocery and eating out fund, and I put it in a separate bank account. Um, yeah, I could do with some weight loss. Um, I have been losing a teeny tiny bit of weight, which is nice, nice, because some of my pants are getting a bit, um, yeah, tight. You know, you just put on your work pants in the morning, you're like, oh, please, 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 just buckle up. <laughs> Um, yeah, but again, it is getting harder and harder to drop the weight. Um, oh, I don't know. I feel like if you've been watching some of my food videos, I've been losing it a little bit more recently. <laughs> uh, there are some videos which I haven't posted because I feel like I'm having like a full blown crisis. I'm like, why, why, why? I hate cooking. Yeah, yeah. I might get around to uploading those ones, but yeah, it feels like I'm having some kind of massive, you know, existential midlife situation. So yeah, we'll see. I'm going to just roll some dice or go with three. Five, eight, nine dollars. Yeah, easy. And we'll go again because I usually do this once a week, right? And it's already more more than halfway through the month. Oh. Again, that's a nine. I did roll, right? Did <laughs> nine. So although I haven't been filming, I have been keeping up to date with tracking my finances. So uh, I've already spent some money on groceries. So after Scrimp and Save, which I rolled two nines, $18, I've got $389 left for the month. Yeah, I'll eventually get around to an unstuffing video. This is my Scrimp and Save savings challenge and if you want a copy of this for free uh you need to shoot me an email all my um details are in the description box below so yeah i don't know if you're doing this let me know how you're going with this new phone in the joke that is running and will continue to go on until I actually do manage to get a new phone. It's getting a hundred dollars. So new phone now has six hundred dollars. Because my savings is taking a little bit of a hit, well a little bit, I mean a massive hit um, next month. I might empty this out and put it into savings. So, you know, this channel is not about fun. Yeah, like if you are a regular, you know that it's fiscal responsibility. <laughs> My birthday passed. Um, I'm 33 now, by the way. So, yay. Um, and again, I, I feel like I had like a quarter life crisis when I was 25, but this year I'm just really 
like, I'll be honest, I'm struggling. I really am. I, I don't think I'm financially struggling. I am mentally struggling with... It's difficult to articulate. With the thought that I might be trying to meet a standard that is potentially impossible. So, I mean, sorry for putting you through this. And you can skip through this, just, yeah. But I think I'm just going to just be honest. I grew up in the most middle class of middle class you know, upbringing. So it's very, very stereotypical Australian upbringings that you, everyone, I think, still envisions, you know. You had the hills hoist in the backyard and I had a home-cooked meal nearly every single night of my life. And, you know, if you're a long-time watcher of my videos, I you know that I really hate cooking. I know, it's funny, right? Um, I really, really don't like it. It's not to say that I'm a bad cook. I don't think I'm a bad cook by any standard. But, you know, I was raised to be a very modern woman. You know, I am the only girl in my family. I've, I've only got brothers. And, you know, the Asian culture is one of male-dominated patriarchy. And so my mother really, really put it in me that, you know, you have to be financially stable on your own, that you have to have your own career, that you should not rely on a man, that kind of stuff. But at the same time, because of her generation and those kind of really genuinely second to third wave feminist ideas still emerging. You know, she was like, at the same time, you've still got to learn how to cook in case and look after your family. So, you know, I was raised to do it all. Yeah. And I feel like as an adult, I do have the life skills to be able to do it all. But I've now surpassed the age where my mother has had or gave birth to me. And I'm a second child with a pretty big age gap between my siblings. Yeah, I'm right in the middle of my siblings. And I feel like I'm trying to emulate what I had as a kid. Like, and I don't know whether my mother was some kind of superhero, being able to have the career, have the kids pay down the mortgage, you know, obviously with my father, and then put a full cooked dinner on the table every single night. Like, I try to do that and I feel like, well, it's just me, right? So, I mean, if I don't eat a nice, nice meal, like, fine, whatever. But am I just trying too hard to reach this superhero standard that my mother said? I don't know, I'm having like a mental crisis over this. And I did talk about this at my birthday party, which um, one of my very good friends very, very graciously threw a whole dinner party. Like he made a full roast dinner, by the way, for like 10 of us. And um, my US friend bought a cake and it was very, very fancy. One of those extremely fancy, expensive cakes that you just know cost <laughs> like in the three digits. Um, yeah, it was lovely. It was lovely. I did post, I think, some photos up on Instagram. Um, and yeah, all my friends were there and, you know, what we were talking about were like house prices. People were talking about upgrading. Yeah, we're now in that house party house price discussion. Um, And I did ask, I was like, how, how often do you guys cook? And most of my friends were like two to three times a week and they just admit to getting like Uber Eats and stuff like that, which is expensive. And, you know, 
am I just too snooty? Because they were like, oh, sometimes we get Maccas. I haven't had Maccas in years, you know. I live, ironically, the closest, the closest to a Maccas out of all of us. Um, but then, you know, where I live, you've got like 20 other better options, restaurant options. So, uh, I don't know. But my friends are my friends, right? So they're going to be like, you're fine. You're doing fine. Yeah, like you guys are strangers on the internet. If I need a reality check, let me know in the comments, genuinely, because I don't know whether I am, again, trying to reach a standard that may not be possible, right? And it's not just like the cooking, it's like getting things done. Like, I don't know how full-blown adults get things done like when do you guys find time to go grocery shopping like I'm squeezing it in I really am like lunch hour you know sometimes if I finish work and because you know I run a business right like I might just make it before closing time I really do miss like Coles and Woolworths closing at midnight, which they were doing during the COVID years. And I swear they were pre-COVID too. But now they close at like 10 p.m. or something. And I'm like, I can't get out to the shop sometimes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just, I know I'm whinging. But I'm finding it so hard just to be a functional adult. Am I the only one? Because... If I'm honest, I'm looking and watching all of your cash stuffing videos here on YouTube and you guys make your life sound so easy. And I get that the internet is sanitized. I really do. I understand that the internet is a place where we sanitize, we make things sound nice. But part of me is thinking... Like, is everyone else just a better adult? I don't know. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. <sighs> My birthday passed. Yeah. I got some coffee. It was nice. I got some perfume. Dinner was really, really nice. Um... Yeah, I find like in your 30s, you have to schedule meetings with your friends now, like especially when you want like to get a dozen people together. I think my friend sent out that invite to everyone with probably six weeks notice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Never the bride the wedding that we're all attending in September. We did talk about that at the at the um, dinner, my birthday dinner. It's getting 100 bucks. 500, 600, 700, 800 dollars. Now, they're pretty casual people and, you know, it's out of town. I was asking them I was like, "Well, oh, you know, is there anything in particular that you guys want us to do and help and yeah, like they're going to have like a dinner at the pub the night before. They've booked it out, so fun. That was the wrong tone. Fun, really fun. I'm just depressed about my life. <laughs> I am looking forward to the getaway. Yeah, we're going to make a whole weekend getaway out of this. Um, being an adult is getting 100 bucks. One hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred dollars. I've got to start Father's Day. Father's Day. Um, I think I did a hundred bucks for Mother's Day. So, for equality purposes, Father's Day is also going to have a hundred bucks by the end of this. Um, so each icon will have to be five bucks. Um, this savings challenge, as with the others, are available on my Etsy store. Um, I'm going to put 30 bucks into this. So I'm 
$30 going into Father's Day. And Christmas is going to get 50 bucks. So now I have $100 in Christmas. So for tracking purposes, I'm going to add the $200 from my birthday and throw it into splurge. Um, as I said, I did spend some of it. Um, I think I spent well, nearly all of it actually on new clothes. So 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000, 1100, 50, 60, 65 on splurge. Okay, so thank you for listening to my whining. <laughs> like, I need to just slap myself a little bit, I think, because objectively speaking, my life is great and I'm a really rational person over an emotional one. You know, objectively and rationally, if I quantify everything, I've got a good income, my job is good, it's a job of my own choosing, my, a business of my own choosing, my family are great, my friends are excellent. Yes, my mortgage is expensive, but you know, I'm still chugging along, right? But maybe the dream, the ideal, the standard of what I thought my life would be and maybe the very extraordinary standard set by my parents is outside of the norm. Maybe it's not possible in today's world to do it. Yeah. And I know I used cooking as an example, but I find that as an adult to do your basic grocery shopping, to put a simple meal on the table is just a sign of being you know a functional grown up and you know i don't even have the added stress of needing to put food on the table for a child but when i struggle and i just genuinely struggle to do that on a weekly basis i think something's wrong And I don't think I cook extraordinarily extravagant meals. But even some nights I'm finding like I might just like go and buy chicken nuggets or something. Oh, I haven't yet. Yeah, I'll show you my groceries. But like I am getting to the level where I'm like, do I just need to lower everything? Lower the standard. Am I aiming too high? Am I Icarus? Am my wings are about to melt off? Let me know. Let me know. Because you guys can be objective about this, yeah? You don't know me. And as an objective outsider, maybe I do need that, you know, kick up the bum. Now, I know YouTube is a very happy, happy, friendly, welcoming place, but if I seriously need a reality check, give it to me, guys. Give it. Anyway, I hope you're all well, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.